This is Helping of Happiness, episode number 123. Today we have sisters Jill and Jane from Habitual Joy on our podcast, and they are teaching us all about how to create more joy in our lives, and I love chatting with them so much. We laughed our heads off while recording this episode. There are a little bit of a few moments where the sound is kind of going in and out a little bit, and that's because these amazing sisters were tag teaming kids all through the episode. You can't even really tell by the way they're talking. But um, Jane's husband was off helping with the cleanup from Hurricane Laura. I mean, these people are amazing people. And so they were really doing the kid thing while they were recording, and they're just super awesome. So forgive a little bit of the sound being back and forth, but we're just so glad to have them on, and I cannot wait for you to meet them. Hi, you're listening to Helping of Happiness. I'm your host, Hilary Hess, a crazy mom of seven kids who loves to eat and loves to travel. Mom life can be exhausting, hectic, and scary at times, so let's take this journey together. We can love, we can learn, we can laugh, we can cry, and we can become better friends while we're at it. Jill and Jane, hello. It is so nice to have you guys on here today. We're excited to be here. Thanks. We're super excited. Well, these fabulous sisters are going to tell us all about how to have a little bit more creativity and joy in our lives today. But first, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about you and your family. So who wants to start? Um, I'll start. So I am the younger sister of Jill. Um, we're just a couple. So this is apart. Jane, just to clear up Jane. So here's Jane. Yes. Yeah, hopefully you can tell our voices apart because we grew up together. We're really close. So we share a lot of mannerisms. But yeah, I'm Jane. I'm the younger sister um, of our pair of sisters. And it's actually just me and all my future cats um, <laughs> is my is my family. <laughs> but I, uh, I just finished up going to school out uh, at Brigham Young University and I studied linguistics. And um, I've had a very adventurous year that landed me here in Texas living with Jill and her family. And we've spent the last six months living together and things are settling down for me. So I'm, I'm excited for what the next six months hold. Well, awesome. Let's move over to Jill. So I, um, I'm living here in Texas. I am married 10 years this year and we have three little kids, two little girls, and then a baby boy. He was born right before all of the COVID stuff hit in January of this year. And um we've been in texas six years now my husband is um an assistant principal at the high school that's just down the street so that's fun and i'm a teacher by training but now i stay at home with my kids and i teach piano part-time so. oh my gosh i swear we are like all these things in common i graduated from BYU. <laughs> I live in Texas and I teach piano. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Soul sisters. Wow. This is so fun. And we find each other on Instagram. What are the odds? Crazy. It it's is crazy, fun. but it's super neat. That like, I just barely came back to Instagram after being away for a year and a half. And I'm like, this is amazing. The network of women that you can connect with. Yeah. Um, almost like instantly that, and that you would never get to meet otherwise. I just think it's, phenomenal. I had never experienced this before with social media. It was actually like a very negative experience prior to this. And which so, is probably why you were away from it for a year and yeah. a half. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, let's be done with this. I can make a choice yes. and remove myself. And it wasn't anybody else. It really was just for me. Yeah. I think I'd gotten wrapped up in things anyway. And so now I'm like, this is amazing. Like we get to meet you and there's just so many great women like yeah. spreading goodness and joy and it's awesome it's awesome yeah it is cool I think it's fun I think Instagram makes it a little easier to find those people Facebook isn't quite as easy with kind of yeah I don't know hashtags and all that kind of help a little bit I think <laughs> but for sure okay well I would love for you to tell my friends listening all about your blog and what's the story about how it got started what's it called the whole deal our blog is called Habitual Joy, and it is something that I've been toying around with the idea of starting for a while, but due to timing or literally having no time, um, I just couldn't start it or get going. It just didn't feel right. Um, and then fast forward to the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, um, 
I was really like facing major life changes, having a third baby, um, and dealing with some postpartum anxiety and just some transition things. Um, and then Jane comes flying in, um, from crazy changes for her too. And it just started to feel right. Um, Mm -hmm. and ultimately like the catalyst was then the upheaval of the world with (laughs) (laughs) COVID-19 and I was finally given, both of us were finally given this time of just stillness. And I'm glad something good came from all of this, right? (laughs) It's true. Um, to just digest our thoughts and what we felt, um, compelled to do and share. Um, and, and just to expand on that background so it is our blog is um the tale of two sisters and our whole kind of the foundation of our belief is that joy fits every life and um we hope that we model that as two very different people with very different life circumstances who find joy and so jill came to this blog and this message from you know the context of her life And my life was, I had moved to Shanghai, China in January to do this ESL job. And I bought my one-way ticket to China right as the coronavirus was just taking its first breath. And so by the time March rolls around and it was just the height of this global panic where we didn't know anything, all we knew was people were dying, I zipped on out of there as fast as I could. And I landed at Jill's doorstep. I said, hi, I don't have a job. I don't have a place to live. I don't have an income can I come stay with you? And she, of course she welcomes me. And I said, so, yes, we love you. Like, we come love stay. people. We already have three people who don't pay us any money either. They happen <laughs> to be five or younger, but you're welcome to join. <laughs> and so I, um, you know, she came to me with this idea. She said, how crazy is this for me to try and share these thoughts with whoever wants to listen on the internet? And I said, I'll do you one better. You know what would make this better is if I joined in. <laughs> and so I basically was like, let me write your coattails. I promise big things. And so we kind of, um, we just started this blog with the hope that it would be a creative outlet for us during the pandemic, um, during quarantine. And we've discovered that creativity um, isn't just an outlet, but it's something that gives us a sense of control in the chaos of life. and it gives us the chance to process our thoughts, to feel like a sense of accomplishment, a sense of purpose. And so yeah, it. It, it builds identity. It connects us deeper in our relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that we really love to explore for sure. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay. So one article that I really love because I pretty much like everything that you've been writing on this blog. It's just amazing. I love it. I'm like you. blog stalking you guys big time. I really like it. But one article that I really loved was one that you posted. You have a bunch of really great ones on creativity. So I'm like, which one am I going to ask them to talk about? (laughs) But the one that I liked the most was, not the most, but one that really stuck out for this podcast in particular was 10 ways to be creative with your kids. Because I think that this is the season, like you're saying in this COVID, we are all trying to be creative and find ways to kind of get through this. And it doesn't have to be big, huge things, but it can be in little ways and in all different types of ways. And I just love that in that post that you referenced Little Women, which is like one of my very favorites. And I just recently watched the new movie. And so I was so excited about that. So do you mind just walking through this, that post with us a little bit? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it's so funny that it's one that you really enjoyed because it was one that as I wrote it, it just like felt like it all aligned, you know, as I was writing it, I'm just like, it just was one of those ones that really like manifested itself that I felt super passionate about. Um, because so much of, for me, like the reason for doing all of this is to ultimately like share it with my children. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited if other people listen and join in, but like, I, I want, you know, to leave good things and like teach universal truth for my children too, you know? Um, but I read little women I, last year to get ready to watch the movie because I adore the book. I read it multiple times, but I had never read it since becoming a mother. I'd only ever read it as a teenager, as a, a young single adult, and now I was reading it as a mother. And so for the first time, I was examining Marmy's character and relating to her on this deeper level. You know, you, she's this just champion of a mother. She serves and she's selfless and She's also raising her children to make choices that are um, 
um, that stand for something. You know, she doesn't ask them to be somebody they're not, but she does help them grow and learn anyway. And so she's just all these wonderful things. And then I read that line where she says, I'm angry nearly every day of my life. And I was just like, what? <laughs> she's this amazing mother and she's angry nearly every day of her life. And for me, I instantly felt like it was okay for me to be filled with fire every day as, as a mother. And sometimes that's wonderful passion and excitement for teaching my kids and raising them and things are clicking and they're showing me the things that they've learned and it's amazing. And some days it is the fire of disappointment and <laughs> anger and frustration. And, and are you kidding me? <laughs> and trying, trying not to say swear words. And it's just like, I just, you know, there's all these different aspects to that, just like, you know, internal struggle. And so to read about Marmy, this wonderful woman in and of herself, and then as a mother as well, I'm like, yes, okay. So it all of a sudden, like really continued to reinforce that I am given permission to be the mother that I want to be. And my kids need me to be, I don't need to try and be any other kind of mother other than the one that I am. And and also then that that can be impactful. You know, she was her own kind of mother and that was incredibly impactful for her family, for her neighbors, for her community. Um, and so that was wonderful to have that revelation through Marmy. She's so great, continues to teach us. Um, and so then I was just thinking of that in relation to creativity and how creativity for me, I'm not like a traditional creative. Well, yes, I do. I love music and I teach piano. I wouldn't say that it comes easy for me. I had to work really hard for that. It wasn't, um, Jane is incredibly musical and it just like flows from her. And it's just, it's beautiful to be a part of and see, but I've had to work super hard. And so I kind of think of myself as like an unconventional creative. I love to organize or like create experiences and things like that. So when I was coming up with ideas for being creative with my kids, I was hoping for us, A, to be able to connect through creativity, and then B, to have it be things that you don't have to be an artist to do. Um, and also then C, you can do right now, today. There are things that you don't have to go gather tons of supplies for. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, you can hopefully do them, or the majority of them, just right at home, especially in light of the hope of the pandemic and you know lots of things aren't open lots of things aren't available so that was the hope with creating those 10 ways and they're things that I do with my kids now and they're great it's really a way for us to connect intentionally and for me it, it's when I know what I'm working towards or I have something to start with like an idea from those 10 ways like if I'm going to have them teach me something you know, I can lock in and realize what my purpose is right here rather than being distracted by other things. I have a, a goal of what we're trying to accomplish. And of course, we don't have to accomplish that goal. We can have it evolve into other things, but at least I know where we're headed at the outset. And I know to stop my other brain waves just to like be right there in that moment. So um, yeah, I just really enjoyed coming up with those 10 ways as I looked at the things that we do. And, and the last thing with those 10 ways was I was hoping that they were also things that other moms might look at and say, oh, I do this. I already am doing this with my kids and have that validation of I am creative. I am a mother. I'm, I'm a creative mother. I'm connecting with my kids. And they didn't even realize it, maybe, that they were doing things already intentionally to connect with their kids and feel validation and support that they're doing good things. I think a huge part of what we always talk about is just like removing the shoulds and the, the shame surrounding what, yes. what our identities are, what types of things are being forced upon us. And so that was the other aspect of the, the 10 ways to be creative with your kids is you're probably already doing it. You just don't know it, but I'm sure that you are. No, I love that. And I love that you talk about being intentional because I do think that when I'm a little bit more intentional, then I know exactly why I'm doing it and it makes it feel a little more worth it to block out other things. Otherwise, yeah. I just get swayed by the breeze because there's something else that's coming up always to interrupt anything I'm trying to do. So, so true. So true. 
Well, do you mind taking us through some of those 10 ways or? Yeah, are, totally. I have much a, time we have time for. Yeah, I have a few written down. So there are a total of 10, but I think I'll just pick a few that I really love. Um, and we'll link them, up to this post in the show notes so that everybody can go and read this full article and see all the rest that we're not talking about. Awesome. And in the blog post, we also, like I, I have just the generic topic, but then I go through like more specifics for each one. So like, if you aren't sure what it would look like for you, you might be able to get some more ideas through reading it. Perfect. Um, but one that I love is having your child teach you to do something. Um, I have very strong and capable little girls and they love to tell me what to do. And so to take the time <laughs> to give them complete authority and autonomy to teach me something is really enjoyable for both of us because I also then give myself permission to let go, you know, and it's not a battle of wills. I am saying, okay, I am the listener. I do need to be the student and be teachable. And that's good practice for me as a mom too, because I often do need to be taught by my children. Um, and it's creative for them to be able to articulate what they know and try and teach that to you step by step. I mean, as far as a teacher and my background in that, that's huge for a child to be able to um, sequentially tell you how to do something and um, super bonding for both of you then to have these finished products that you both contributed to in really um, big ways. And so that's, that's really fun for so many reasons. So what kinds of things have you had your kids teach you? So, so it's been simple things. Sometimes like they'll teach, like Tatum's taught me how to make a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Super easy, Cute. right? Um, and, she, and so I'll start to try and just follow her directions and it can be kind of crazy, but um, <laughs> we've also, she's taught me, what are some things? Oh, she's taught me how to draw something before. Um, she's taught me how to draw like our family and she'll, she'll do different things to tell me who looks you know, how to make somebody look the right way. They need to be taller. They need to be shorter. <laughs> um, she taught me how to make a snowflake, you know, the fold up paper. Oh, snowflake. yes. Yeah, that was fun one time too. I did it wrong multiple times. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> I, I tried. Because moms pretty much are never right. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, another one from the list is, oh, to make silly movies together. Um, I mean, I always try and like, I have that internal battle of technology and when to use it with my kids. Um, but we all know our kids love looking at themselves in oh, this world of it. like <laughs> <laughs> instant gratification with our phone cameras. And so it's fun for both of us to embrace it and be like, yeah, let's make a video and be crazy. We'll put on dress ups and makeup and the whole shebang. And it's a good time. Um, Let's see, what's another one from the list? We have, um, oh, make something to give some to someone. Mm. Um, that's always enjoyable. I mean, service, of course, is going to give us all the feel goods. Um, and then for them to have put in the hard work and effort to make something, I think goes a long way as well for them to also, rather than just dropping something off, of course, that's wonderful. We do not need to make something every time. But uh, there, there are times where it seems like it's really appropriate for them to put in a little effort and, and, and it's fun because I've something. seen your kids start to initiate that on their own. Um, cause they, they have an elderly neighbor who's just an angel. And so the girls will just run up and say, can we go give this to her? And they'll just go run and put it in her mailbox. And so they really have started to just initiate that on their own because they learned it from their parents. Well, and I well, love that because I think we all have an elderly neighbor, right? It seems like that would probably really appreciate something like that. That is so yeah. cute. I love that your kids are starting to think of that on their own. That's awesome. Um, and then we also love to, oh, build something magical. It sounds, <laughs> I'm so bad at like embracing little kid land and world I just it doesn't come naturally to me I'm very task oriented matter of fact so for me to say magical to my children is like their eyes open wide and they're like what <laughs> what are Mom we doing is, what and really all we are doing is using like my recycling boxes and trash to make things <laughs> it's really just that simple but the moment I say magical it just opens up a whole other world and so we've made leprechaun traps, you know, we've done 
forts, of course, out of the big giant Amazon boxes. And um, we've done like a fairy garden in the backyard out of different like things that we scavenge. So it really is literally <laughs> trash. <laughs> but it's magical when you attach that word to it and you know kids they will just run with it um and of course these are like with my little kids but I feel like so many of these are adaptable to age levels because mm -hmm. they're not so specific that you can't do other things I mean you know a teenager can teach you how to do something too and they will get TikTok. yeah like, they, they, <laughs> they can teach you how to use TikTok that's right they will get special enjoyment out of telling their parents what to oh, do, right? Oh, they probably like it even better. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, that's what, the other thing that I really enjoyed about this list was as we came up with them, we're like, oh, these are really versatile. These can totally work across the board for the most part. So. Love it. Those are all such good ones. Did you have any other ones or was that? Mm, I feel like that's the big ones that we've really enjoyed lately. Love it love it those are all such such good ones okay so do you have any personal stories of how like putting creativity in your life as a mom or a person or is it um, you, like just like live it through your kids because like kids kind of take everything at these I years. know <laughs> I will say yes I definitely live it through my kids um the other aspect of that is I have had to be intentional about creating for myself um, because you get lost in the world mm -hmm. of little kids like building something magical is so fun and it's really enjoyable with them but it's enjoyable <laughs> for me to see them excited but it's not like it it's not your own filling your bucket yes yes so I'm like what is the word to say this about sounding terrible but it does nothing <laughs> for me <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have had to come up with like realize what things I can do to feel that for myself because there was a time where I didn't do anything for myself and that's also times and seasons for sure yes, that's just sure. how it is but um, as I as my kids have grown and I've gotten a little bit better at juggling the, the baby stages um, I am able to see like different projects that I can do and create for myself around the house or um, to make and give to other people um, or like for me organization has really as I've embraced it as a creative outlet it then can fill fill that part of me that I need so it's we're that's why we really did discuss unconventional um, creativity because it's I think it's really important to just label things as to, to attach that label of creativity to things that you might not normally think of it and it transforms it it transforms organizing my closet under the stairs that's a black hole into something for me and it can be enjoyable and look at this cool project I did rather yeah. than I want to die this is terrible and miserable <laughs> <laughs> I have to clean this thing yeah this is uh -huh, yeah. such a good way to put it I love that man I, I guess under my kitchen sink is going to be a magical place really soon <laughs> Yeah. We just had to have the plumber come and everything was pulled out because the pipes were all a mess. So that I'll have a magical afternoon putting all my cleaning <laughs> products back. But, you know, you attach magical to it and it's amazing <laughs> what can happen. Little kids and adults. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so we're going to be creative in all these ways, but I know that there's also times when we think we're going to be creative in all these ways and it doesn't happen and then we're super discouraged right yes. so I know Jane had a really great post about dealing with discouragement how do we keep trying when we don't feel the magic in all of our endeavors or get to those magical endeavors we think it's twofold for dealing with discouragement one aspect of it is really knowing your worth and where your worth is rooted and then also the other aspect is adaptability and so with that worth is remembering that you can be creative and produce all of these amazing things but at the end of the day what you're producing doesn't mean you're any greater or better than the person that you were earlier it's wonderful and it fills you but you are worthy just as you are you don't have to be producing these things to be as the phenomenal woman that you were this morning that you are still that person whether you were creative or not 
Love that. Awesome. Love it. I'm on board. <laughs> the, um, the kind of the, <laughs> the, so that is for me, that is just that internalized understanding. And then the flip side of that coin is the action you take with that knowledge. And Jill and I right now, we're calling that adaptability um, in dealing with discouragement, where for me, those look like being resilient and having a script in place for those late nights or just those moments where your insecurity is just so triggered and you kind of have this like internal script where you know once you get old enough it's kind of starting to become kind of a habit where you you kind of you realize that you're being so hard on yourself and you say okay okay even if you maybe don't believe it it's something that you can hold on to to get you through those moments and you just say okay I am being very hard on myself I'm feeling very insecure this might be my depression, this might be my anxiety, this might be whatever, you know, your personal demons are. But I know that if I can just go to sleep, or if I can just go get, you know, a drink of water, or whatever, that I'll start feeling better. And that this is, this isn't true about myself. And then you just start taking action, and you just keep moving forward. And so for me, it's having this script that I tell myself, or it's having um, friends and family who are going to provide that script for me. So sometimes it's, you know, I'm feeling resilient enough and I can talk myself through that. And other times it's friends and family catching me as I fall and walking me through that script on my behalf. And so for me, um, dealing with discouragement, a big part of that is um, friends and family and just the lifelong lesson of knowing how to recognize what is and isn't true about yourself. And just trusting that. in that. Yeah. yeah. Because we can sure make things up to be something really huge that they oh really aren't, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I feel like I just turned 29 this week. And so I'm looking at 30 next. And I feel like someone once said this to me when I was, you know, in my mid 20s. They said, Oh, your life is just taking shape. And I remember being so surprised because I just, I was a grown up, I was an adult, and I had life figured out. And how dare they think my life was just starting? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, four years later, I'm starting to understand what that means. And I'm realizing, oh, you're right. My life is just starting to take shape. And I'm only just starting to learn these truths about what it means to be an adult and to grow older and to, you know, turn 50, turn 60, turn 70. And so, well, you're learning it earlier than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, uh, yeah. It's awesome. a gift. Being so I, wise. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So is there any stories that you have that go along with times when your family and friends have been able to pull you out of that? Oh, for sure. sure. I mean, I, I don't want to sound dramatic, but I feel like <laughs> <laughs> bring on the drama I, do you need music <laughs> where's some good music <laughs> I'm like tie your hair up in a ponytail dun, dun, it's about to get real <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like I have become really good at failure and failing and having to confront that and sometimes have that be part of how I define myself you know in the darker periods of my life and I mean for example there was two times I almost flunked out of college and, you know, just pulling myself back from that, uh, being supported by so many people. And most recently is this, you know, very dramatic story of Jane moves to China, COVID breaks out, Jane escapes China and comes back to the U.S. and and it's still crazy there, and she's unemployed, and, and I have this. But whole... it is devastating. <laughs> it is devastating oh when you goodness. have one thing in your mind, and it just gets the rug yeah. swept right out from under Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I, I had finally graduated college, and it had taken me 10 years of off and on. It was like this bad boyfriend. Like, we would break up, and then we'd get back together. <laughs> and 10 years later, you know, we'd finally come out the other side of it. And so I was celebrating by taking a risk on myself and saying, you know what, I am going to go move to China and pursue this wild, you know, millennial style dream. And I was going to write about it. And I was going to, you know, create this identity. And, and it was going to be really great. And, you know, you buy a one way ticket to China, not expecting... thinking you're going to be back in a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And so, you know, the outbreak happened and, you know, all of these events happened so quickly and I came back and I just spent weeks and weeks just really grieving the person who I had hoped to become. Um, I grieved, you know, not even being able to say goodbye to my students, you know, never, never going to see them again. Um, you know, grieving, having lost so many of these tangible things that I could build my self-esteem on with a job, with, um, you know, this glamorous life, et cetera. And I was unemployed, living in my sister's home. And anyways, and so all that is to say, it was a little discouraging. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, you know, on the days when, for several weeks while I waited for, you know, my my uh, anxiety meds to kick in because I increased my dosage. You have to wait about six weeks for that to take oh, That's the and, worst, isn't and it? It's a, it's it's a, a horrible waiting weeks. game. It's horrible. Oh. And so you just spend all day, every day, just walking yourself through these essentials. You know, wake up, eat food, take a shower, don't hate yourself, don't hate your life, or, you know, don't like choose not to believe that this is it and choose to believe that it will get better. And so I, like I had that internalized script and then I also had Julian and I had her wonderful husband, Jacob, who has always been the older brother I've never had. Um, and, and I had my parents and I had, you know, all these, uh, this network of friends around the country from school and, um, just people who I could turn to. And I had people who called me and I actually had a dear friend who he's from Wuhan, China, where, which is the heart of the outbreak. And when I came home from the stream that I gave up, he calls me and I'm thinking, okay, all right, he's going to need some bolstering. And so I got ready just to, to be his cheerleader. And he calls me and he says, I just wanted to check in because I know you're back from China and I just know that must be so devastating. Are you okay? And I was just blown away because his family was trapped in Wuhan under quarantine and he was so worried about them, but he had called to check on me. And that's just one example of all the people in my life who care about me and who are there for me and who tell me this script of, it does get better, you are worthy of joy, and you can have joy. Um, you know, just get through this moment because joy is so much more permanent than this moment is. I love that. That is so perfect. What a perfect way to just explain all the things you guys are doing and sharing and being and living and your examples are just incredible because even through yeah. those failures with well, these thoughts you. i think is just awesome and i love that on instagram you guys have the most fun little videos and things that you do so <laughs> it's really fun i love it i want everyone to go find you on there and check them out because they're really cute so oh, let's actually tell everybody let's give me your handles where where can everybody find you sure you can find us um our blog is habitualjoy.com um, and we post there usually on good weeks. We post there three to four times a week. This past That's week, we might have posted one time. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I worked on a blog post all week long and never got it published. It's fine. But we know how to deal with discouragement. We sure do. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find us on Instagram at habit habitual dot joy. Um, and we're very active there. We post ridiculous videos recently. It's too Jill, much fun. Jill injured herself making one last week. <laughs> oh no! What happened? You better tell us this story. Just you know, we were talking about everyday creativity, helping you identify those different ways that you're creative every day and may not realize it. And so we did it by following each of us around, just doing little scenes of our we, day that are creative, and then the other person would jump, literally jump in the screen <laughs> with like a weird face and be like, "Creativity." And so I was on the ground journaling very candidly of course and then unexpectedly jill didn't tell me she was doing this but she's standing up in the corner and she just runs and just fully like superman dives onto the ground in front of the camera it's true i was i was committed to the role <laughs> and she, the she has wooden floors and so i was like oh i'm still even burns yeah <laughs> like goodbye so goodbye pelvis <laughs> but it was worth it so worth it Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so fun. Did you, you didn't show that part of it though, did you? You probably should have like an outtake video after that <laughs> one. That would be a good idea. We'll have to make a compilation since <laughs> there's many. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I 
love it. This is how you deal with discouragement when your videos don't record the way that you want them to. You go to the hospital and get a cast. <laughs> a full body cast and you chatter your pelvis trying to do a good role in the video. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, is there anything else that you guys would like to share before we shift over? Well, as of right now, the blog is kind of um, like an ongoing journal as well as just, you know, philosophizing about, you know, how to access joy. And over time, um, we hope to develop our blog into a very concrete, finite instructions on actions that you can take. Because we talked about dealing with discouragement is, you know, knowing your worth and taking action on it. And so right now we spend a lot of time just like talking about our worth and, and talking about everybody's worth. And we hope to continue to share ideas for taking action. Um, and then eventually to um, just develop just like a clear path for everyone can to take and it's they don't have to scroll through you know our history of thousands of blog posts and so hopefully everyone can just you know stay tuned while we continue down this blogging journey and um, we're excited to continue to learn from people like you Hillary and just everyone it's been fun and I think ultimately like what we hope our messaging is and what we want to share is this isn't about perfection it's not like mm -hmm. there is one path that you can mm -hmm. follow sequentially to achieve joy mm -hmm. joy that. is i mean i don't want to say earned because we're all we're always worthy of joy but you do have to work you do have to choose to put yourself in situations to have joy to create habits that provide joy um mm -hmm. to choose to keep moving forward amidst discouragement that that's why we use that word habitual to talk about the reality that joy is we want it to be this deep abiding undercurrent of peace in our lives um but you do have to put in the effort to do it mm -hmm. and it's worth it absolutely and we're doing it right along with everybody else <laughs> <laughs> this is not something that is just easy for us 24 7. it's something that we want to do right along with everybody else and just take part in this process together absolutely that's great love that so you guys haven't arrived to full joy yet, I guess, is what you're saying. Oh, my goodness. No, maybe. <laughs> we mostly just try. It's like a little, like, matchstick that we're trying to not let burn out. And, <laughs> you know, someday, maybe, at least some days it'll be, you know, a nice wild, like, burning fire in the fireplace. But sometimes it's a, little, a candle a on a windy stick. day. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I'm getting over, I'm, like, mine yes. burnt out. And I'm like, Jane, help me Exactly, out. yeah. <laughs> I like love that you're doing it like. together. Love that. So great. Do you mind going through our helpful and happy questions really quick? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So I throw these helpful and happy questions in to link it in with Helping of Happiness blog. And on that blog, we talk about our favorite foods and we have family recipe mm -hmm. and family travel and homemaking hacks because the whole point for me to do help, Helping of Happiness is to bring Kind of like what you're saying with the joy, have a little bit more happy in all the family things and food, travel, and little tips of how to be a better mom. I'll bring me a lot more happiness. So awesome. I right would there with you. love to hear your tips on each of these areas. So who wants to go first on their favorite food or meal? Okay, I will go first. Awesome. <laughs> Jill's pointing at me. You're going first. <laughs> She's running off with the baby. Um, favorite food. Oh man. My biggest just comfort food is anything our grandma cooks. Um, I mean, she is an immigrant from Mexico and so she can, she can oh. cook you something that will just fill your soul. Um, and we cook Christmas tamales every year. And so that's always just Fun. such a comfort food for me. So I love Christmas tamales for sure. Love that. Oh no. Did I steal yours? No, you're fine. <laughs> Um, that was definitely at the top of my list. Mine was just going to be my alternate. It was going to be sushi. Ooh. Oh, time, sushi. Do you guys make yeah. it yourself or do you go out? Both. Um, not not like we make it well. Just like when we're feeling <laughs> fun and adventurous, I'll make some. But I feel like partly I love it so much because every time I get pregnant for nine months, I'm like, ah, oh, probably shouldn't eat it. And so it like you know, makes me want it even more. Of course, I of course. That like raw, yummy sushi. So 
Yeah, that's probably my alternate to. I'd like to change mine to sushi. <laughs> We've never made homemade sushi except for like the candy kind, you know, where you get the Rice Krispie Treat oh, and the Twizzler so and you roll cool. it all up with the, ro- the so. what is it, a fruit roll up as like the wrapper of it or something. <laughs> yeah, I need to learn how to make real sushi. You guys need to teach me or something. That would sound so oh, yummy. Yeah. Come on, I do come like on over. We'll make it together. <laughs> <The> sushi <laughs> making party. <laughs> I yep. love it. Okay. What about travel? Do you guys have a favorite trip or a dream vacation? I have a favorite trip for sure. Are you travelers? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, I guess you are if you were willing to be adventurous (laughs) and go to China. Maybe travel. I'm I'm, I'm very much the millennial stereotype, you know, the single, the single millennial girl who loves to travel. And um, I mean, China's the one that got away. So that one's just like, that one's just a heartbreaker. So I will always love that one. But my favorite trip is... The study abroad program I got to go on um, oh, through where BYU. You, where did you oh, go? It was amazing. So they have a linguistics program in Ecuador, <gasps> and you arrive in the capital city, and then you drive six hours east, and then you literally just live in the jungle for two months. Oh and my goodness! The professor left halfway through the program to go do her field work, so we were all just living in the jungle with you know the other. There were a couple other universities, and we were just unsupervised and have the best time and you know it, oh, well it's BYU of course <laughs> and it, it was fun to be with other you know members of our religious community and um we just traveled around and we got straight A's but I don't know if we learned anything <laughs> but you know we all got straight A's so it was just a win all around it was super fun that sounds so awesome I would yeah. love that too okay what about you Jill um, so I've been on several trips and gotten to go to lots of different places, but I was thinking about when you said your dream vacation, um, and my husband and I are going on 10 years this year, this month actually, and right now a dream vacation just sounds like leaving my children and going with my husband and I. Like, Pretty much anywhere, <laughs> as long as it's away. <laughs> I told Jason, like, it could be to our backyard, but like just not with my children. So that sounds like a beautiful dream right now. I don't do it often enough, but I try to just like text Jill or Jake, whoever I think will take me up on the offer and say, hey, I have time this Saturday. I have like this window of time. Do you want me just to take the kids? And it's Do you want to come to my house? I will totally take you up on that anytime. (laughs) (laughs) I know, seriously. Just like find a sister, like get her to lose her job and have her move in and I mean, there's pros, there's definitely some fringe benefits, I think, to the situation. (laughs) That's awesome. I love that. Oh, that is so great. Okay. What about our last one? Do you guys have a homemaking hack for us today? Yes, we do. I tried to steal one of Jill's because I blanked, but then she reminded me of one of mine. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I worked um, custodial jobs during college. And one thing I learned was that the best way to clean glass is just with plain water and a microfiber rag. So you just turn on the faucet, turn it off, dip your water in the water that's pulled in the sink, kind of like wipe it off so it's not too wet, and then just wipe down all the spots on the mirror and then dry it with the dry part of the rag. It doesn't disinfect, of course, but it doesn't leave behind any film from um, the chemicals, and you also don't have to use chemicals every time to keep it clean looking. So. That's one thing I learned from my custodial jobs. I love that. I love that. I always get mad at my kids when they, because I tell them the same thing to do that. Because I've, yeah. after using many different window cleaners and everything else through the years, figured that out a little bit too. But they always want to soak the rag. And then they're like just smearing it <laughs> oh, all it's, over. Yeah, and then it's like, like, this is the easiest way to clean glass. Why yes, can't you do this? <laughs> yes. I'm like, I can tell you cleaned the bathroom, but it just doesn't look very clean. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Leaving it partially dry, that really partially dry. That really does make such a huge difference. That's such a good one. Okay. What about you, Jill? Um, So mine is you never have a bunch of shoe holders. You know, the ones that hang over doors. Yes. But never use them as shoe holders. I like, have them on every door in like in closets in like our um, closet under the stairs. I love to use them to organize bathrooms. 
right now I have one in just like our craft closet that has like ready to go activities for my little kids. Oh, so they can just go up, <gasps> grab a bag and then they're like, Oh, this bag is for da da and it has all the supplies in it and it's good to go. And it's right at their height. You know, anything that they can reach is an activity for them. Um, and so I love them. All those pockets are so useful for storing all of my junk when I'm not being good about decluttering. And so I have a shoe holder, seriously, in every space in my house, on the back of every door, it seems like, but it's really useful. And it's so organized. I love that idea. Instead of everything just being dumped in a big drawer or something, that's yes. awesome. Yes, it's a game changer. It's been huge for our keeping, for my little kids keeping track of things too. They know, oh, it goes back in this pocket. And there's labels or pictures on the pockets too that they can just match it up with oh it goes in this pocket you know so it works out nicely so great well this has been such a treat for me to talk to you ladies today I have had so much fun and I just wish we could just go on and on and on but I know you have to be a mom and do all these <laughs> oh things. it's been the same for us too we've enjoyed it so much and thanks for being so flexible and making it so just easy to chat just yes. easy to chat and I open love up joining in and it's always good to just chat with just like positive things about other like-minded people Thank well you. this has been awesome you guys are incredible everybody go follow habitual joy go read all the wonderful blog blog posts and do something creative today that will be should we have that be our little challenge for everybody right i love it i think it's a great challenge thank you so much you guys if you enjoyed this episode, please go share it with a friend. And if, if you're listening through your favorite podcast app, make sure that you head over and rate and review and subscribe. And if you'd like to hear even more from us, head over to our website, helpingwithhappiness.com. You can follow us on social media. We also have a weekly newsletter that goes out that contains recipes, travel tips, more stuff about our podcast guests and the show notes. So if you're interested in that, head over to our Helping of Happiness page. Press subscribe and pop in your, your email there so that we can put you on our list and you can get all of those great things. Have a wonderful week.